Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Azar and today we're going to talk about RPA Challenge. This is a, a website rpachallenge.com. Almost everyone is familiar with RPA industry or works on RPA projects, developers uh, know about this website. In, in, in some of the firms this is used as a standard uh, interview process where uh, the candidates are requested to complete this channel with respective tool. There are various ways to complete this particular challenge using uh, you know, a, a ton of RPA tools like UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, Pega, you name it. It's meant to challenge a developer's uh, psyche of how this, uh, you know, how the tool works, how, uh, how particular objects on a website are identified and how to automate it. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably already aware of the goal of this particular challenge they provide an excel file let me show the excel this excel has first name last name company role address email address and phone number these are essentially the fields on this web page with every round the position of every field would change so uh, I am on the round seven right now. You see last name, phone number, role as a first row. Now, the moment I go to round eight, the sequence changes. The biggest challenge is the HTML properties of each of these fields are dynamic and it changes in every single round. So you cannot have a static code and uh, automate this. In this video, we're gonna talk only about automation anywhere. Uh, there are a lot of scripts which you can use to complete this Python, uh, C Sharp, PowerShell, but we are only going to stick to automation anywhere. As this is an RPA challenge, we are only going to use RPA tool, which is automation anywhere. There are two parts to this video. The first part is where I explain the logic that I use to complete this challenge. Probably one of the best. Uh, there might be other ways. Leave a comment to let me know. And the second part of the video will be a, a more a lengthier video where we will discuss the code itself. Okay, so for the first part of the video, let me uh, show you how this this website changes. Okay, so I'm just going to start DOM Explorer to see the IDs. So I selected the company name as a field, and you can see the input name, the ID is this. Now let me just submit this and go back to company name again. If you see the ID has changed, right? And some of the other features of this particular field change too. Uh, the label name remains the same. However, uh, just with label name, the object properties or object cloning command, so to say, in automation anywhere does not really work. And it's not really reliable that way. So we have to use the ID, which I found to be the best identifier for this particular challenge. Now, the game or the logic behind getting the right ID every time you submit a form is to read this particular source code which you see here at the bot button and uh, using string operations you can extract the IDs and then use either object loading or uh, web control commands to fill the form. If you extract the code of this particular page now there is a command in automation anywhere extract source to variable if you extract the source this is what you get so it's basically the source code of the web page. Now, if I search first name, let's say I just want to find the ID for the first name. This is what I get as the ID. Now, with this ID, I can go ahead and use object loading command to fill it or use web control command to fill whatever input I have from the Excel. Now, there are a lot of discussions about how to read data from Excel. There are some people who suggest using database method gives you a quicker result, but uh, I do not agree. 
because uh, reading Excel data is one part of it, but the challenge typically gauges the time that you spend on the web page itself. So the time you take to fill in the details is what matters, not the time that you uh, spend in capturing the details for Excel. So for uh, for this code or for this video, I've only used open spreadsheet and then get multiple cells. All right, so that's the command that I'm using to get the information from Excel. Then I extract the source of the web page. I use string operations to get the particular IDs and I save them in variables. Once I have them, I use the set text command to set uh, whatever field I'm on. So for address, uh, I use an address. So I've named the variables accordingly and I use them. Every time, so, so it's a loop that I have. There are 10 rounds, so I have a loop count of 10. Every time I submit a web page, I begin my loop by extracting the data from Excel, putting it into variables, and then extracting the source of the website, getting the IDs, and filling the details accordingly. So that's the logic I've used. I'll also uh, add a video of the bot actually running and performing the task at the end of this video and stay tuned for the next part of it where we discuss the code line by line and complete this. Thank you. Using the logic that we discussed previously, we're going to run the bot three times and uh, check for the accuracy and the run time on the RPC. for watching.